Top 100 Scary SCPs Item number SCP-303 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures as SCP-303 has not yet been known to travel beyond the boundaries of site, the entire site of it is currently considered SCP-303's containment area. All rooms in site are to be altered where possible, as to have two entrances separated by a distance of 10 meters or line of sight. Personnel are to be distributed evenly throughout the facility, with available radio or intercom contact, so that encounters may be resolved quickly. Personnel who witness SCP-303 are to be submitted for immediate psychiatric evaluation. Description Witnesses describe SCP-303 as a nude, sexless, emaciated humanoid figure with reddish-brown skin. Instead of normal facial features, its head is dominated by an extremely large mouth, which bears a set of oversized human teeth. It continually vocalizes a wheezing noise loud enough to be heard from the other side of most solid doors. All individuals who have had encounters with SCP-303 are capable of describing it in full, including individuals who have not physically seen any part of it. SCP-303 will periodically materialize behind any closed door, hatch, or other entry barrier opposite a sentient observer, chosen by unknown means. SCP-303 will then remain behind the door for an indeterminate amount of time. Any individual attempting to open the door or barrier experiences intense, paralyzing fear that lasts until SCP-303 dematerializes, either on its own or to avoid being directly seen by another observer. The source of this fear is not clear, but appears to be similar in nature to arachnophobia and ophidinophobia originating on a pre-conscious genetic level. Analysis indicates that SCP-303 is not, in fact, purposefully inducing fear in the affected individuals. SCP-303 does not allow itself to come into direct visual contact with any observer, and has never allowed any one individual to view more than 10% of its form. When the door or other entryway barrier is partially or completely transparent, SCP-303 will materialize in an orientation that leaves 10% or less of its body visible, or cause effects of fog or frost on the transparent surface to achieve the same effect. If SCP-303 is approached from a direction in which there is not a solid object or door-breaking line of sight, it will dematerialize before direct visual contact is made. Any electronic or complex mechanical devices that SCP-303 encounters are temporarily disabled. SCP-303 has made no recorded attempt to physically or verbally engage with any observer. How SCP-303 arrived at site is not known at this time. SCP-303's first recorded appearance was on 3-1-2010. It is suspected that SCP-303 was inadvertently transferred along with or manifested by another SCP on site. All SCPs on site are being re-examined accordingly. Incident Log 303-A Incident 303-1 Agent was showering in her private quarters bathroom when she became aware of the presence of SCP-303 on the opposite side of her shower curtain. It was wheezing extremely loudly. Startled by the discovery, she accidentally struck the shower curtain, causing it to sway outwards. The curtain partially wrapped around SCP-303, revealing that it was less than 0.5 meters from the curtain, standing erect and facing the shower. Agent reports spending approximately the next three hours sobbing in the shower quietly, as not to disturb SCP-303. Agent reported that the wheezing stopped very suddenly, at which point in time she was able to exit the shower. Incident 303-3 Agent encountered SCP-303 inside the site second floor break room. He was attempting to obtain coffee creamer from the counter cabinet when he heard loud wheezing emanating from the cabinet and was overtaken by overwhelming fear. 
agent later reported that SCP-303 was huddled in the cabinet in the fetal position. Agent claimed to be certain of the information despite failing to open the cabinet door. Later, when the cabinet was examined, one container of powdered coffee creamer was missing. Note, this is the first recorded instance of SCP-303 removing an object from a scene. Incident 303-6, Dr. was discovered dead from dehydration in a second floor storage room. It is estimated that Dr. spent up to five days in the storage room before being discovered. A small four meter by four meter decompression chamber separated the storage room from the adjoining hallway. SCP-303 occupied the decompression chamber for the duration of Dr. isolation in the storage room, disallowing entry from either direction and making it impossible for Dr. to leave. Test Log 303-A A team consisting of Dr. Researcher, four security personnel, and four D-class personnel were assigned to be dispatched to any reported incident of SCP-303's materialization in order to immediately perform on-site testing. These logs take place at the door to room from the first hallway. SCP-303 was reported to be within room test 303-1. One male D-class personnel, D-303-1, was ordered to open the door and threatened that he would be transferred to SCP duty for non-compliance. He refused, citing extreme fear. Test 303-2. One male D-Class personnel, D-303-1, was ordered to open the door and threatened that he would be terminated on the spot for non-compliance. He refused, claiming if he were to do so, that SCP-303 would... He was terminated on the spot. Test 303-3. One female D-Class personnel, D-303-2, that had witnessed the termination of D-303-1, was ordered to open the door and threatened that she would be terminated on the spot for non-compliance. She refused, claiming that if she opened the door, that SCP-303 would... Researcher was visibly shaken by this claim. D-303-2 was not terminated. Test 303-4 one female D-Class personnel, D-303-2, was ordered to open the door. One male D-Class personnel, D-303-3, was given one combat knife by security personnel in order to until D-303-2 opened the door. After two hours of D-303-2 died from blood loss. D-303-2 made no attempt to open the door. Addendum 5-1-2010 SCP-303 appears to have claimed the second floor storage room as its own. It has so far disallowed any personnel entry to the room since 4-5-2010. It leaves periodically to acquire Foundation property, which is then moved into the second floor storage room. To date, the following list describes all non-classified items taken by SCP-303. 1. Cryotube three sets of standard foundation surgical equipment of two D-class research cadavers, one gasoline-powered generator, a variety of chemicals, including large quantities of tryptophan, phenylalanine, and tyrosine, among others, one container of powdered coffee creamer. In addition to this, a number of classified materials have been obtained by SCP-303, Staff are still attempting to determine what specific purposes SCP-303 may have for these materials. Alright, so you guys ever seen that movie Twins? With Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger? Right, so... They created the perfect human. Arnold. He was the peak of genetic attributes and performance. And then there was the other twin, Danny DeVito. He was basically all the other leftover crap that Arnold didn't get. I think that 303 is probably one of these leftover balls of crap from a different SCP. Probably have been manifested by accident just as a byproduct 
uh, it seems to have some sentience, but at the same time, it's I don't see anything there that really signifies a lot going on upstairs. I would, however, like to know what true fear actually is. I can't fathom what kind of images or thoughts would go through someone's head that would prevent them from opening a door, even if their life depended on it. Maybe somebody didn't care if they lived or died. That's understandable, but I doubt that all five or six of these cases where they were unable to open the door, which ended up leading to their deaths, uh, were of the same nature, and those people were wanting to unalive themselves anyway. So, interesting concept. So, thanks for hanging out, guys. Make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, like the video, comment below. It really helps a lot. Have a great day, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later!